Hey everyone, welcome back. I appreciate you taking the time to swing by the channel and watch the content I'm putting together. So if you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. Please consider hitting subscribe and liking the video. Stick around, today we're gonna cover thermal. A little before seven in the morning on the road, uh, out the door a little before 6.30 this morning, loading up gear and, and heading out. Doing some thermal work today, actually doing thermal mapping. Um, we've got a site that we monitor regularly for thermal activity. So we'll be doing that today. And I figured I'd take you guys along to see some of the things that we're doing since this week we're talking about thermal. Um, got the M300 with me and the X-T2. All right, we're on site. Uh, it's still foggy from the morning. We've only got about a mile of visibility, so it's gonna be a little bit before the drones can go up. So we're working on ground control, because in addition to the thermal survey, we're also doing a topo survey that we do on this site every quarter. Uh, it's been two weeks since I've been able to get in front of the camera and record one of these. Uh, we've been pretty busy in the field, but we also had an uh, incident happen that uh, kept me pretty tied up. No fault of our own or anything like that, and I really can't talk too much about it, but maybe in the future we'll be able to share some of that info with you. We're trying to go over our journey here is we've got some clients asking us not to fly DJI equipment, so we're going to have to find options for replacing some of our current capabilities uh, in the near future. We've got a deadline that's coming in April. So today I want to talk a little bit about thermal, uh, how we're doing it, some of the applications we're using it for, equipment. Our thermal activities are pretty much uh, roof type inspections, PV solar inspections, and we've got a little bit of thermal mapping that we do for some proprietary clients that we're keeping an eye on the environment for them. Roof and PV is 99% of what we do. Um, we are using the thermal cameras from FLIR, they're radiometric, uh, we have ITC level one thermographers that are doing analysis, but also helping with how we set up the, the collection of the data and ensuring everything's done properly. With that said, you know, we've got the M300 here with an X-T2, and that's our workhorse right now. That's our primary platform for collecting PV and solar. For the prior few years, we've largely relied on the Inspire 1, which is the XDR. Um, the XT on an Inspire 1, yes, flight times are not ideal. You get maybe 15 minutes if you're lucky. But quick, nimble, reliable, the Inspire 1 has been a true workhorse. We've loved that aircraft. Um, and the large reason we've moved away from it is because the battery is no longer available. DJI had liked them a little while ago, and they're just simply not available. So we have had one fall from the sky due to a battery cell failure. And at that point, we decided to ground them. Uh, because they're just not safe. So we went straight to the M300 when it was announced and got an XT2 for it as well. Uh, it's a great aircraft, you know, it's a completely different level of aircraft than the Inspire 1. This aircraft is more dust resistant, water resistant, truly an enterprise platform, whereas the Inspire 1 was not so much. But with that comes pretty different costs. So, you know, 2,000, 2,500 for Inspire 1, depending on what series and features you got on. Uh, so you're starting at about $12,000 for the aircraft on this one. So big difference in capability. This one's up in the air for about 38 minutes uh, with a payload on it. If you don't have a payload on it, DJI says you get about 55 minutes. Um, but yeah, who's flying it without a payload? All right, so one of the other thermal options that we've gotten that we've used is the SimsFly Duet C. I'm a huge advocate of SimsFly products. We've got the EBXs, we use them quite a bit for large scale mapping. And this is a really impressive payload. Uh, it's got basically a soda, which is a sensor built for photogrammetry uh, payload on it, as well as a FLIR radiometric payload, all integrated here. And it's pretty nice. Um, as far as a dual capability goes, I wanna say this is probably the highest resolution photogrammetry payload um, combined with a FLIR radiometric payload on the market. Very good concept. I love the idea of it. Uh, but frankly speaking, it's very unique. 
Um, we wouldn't use this on solar farms. Um, we have, you can go read the Solar 360 materials on it, uh, which would be collect with a specific requirement, set it up for wrapper maps, upload your data, get it automated process. We have flown this for solar inspection, and you know, while I love SenseFly, it's just not up to the standards that we're used to. It's not a product that we could consider delivering to our clients. Um, when you fly a multi-rotor, you're low, you're slow, and most all of your images are very crisp and in very good focus. Fixed wing is flying much faster. Uh, we still flew this very low at basically 130 feet above the solar farm and it was in line with the arrays like recommended but we had a lot of motion blur um, it was a very low wind day everything fell in with the specs that you're supposed to fly it with but the data quality was just not there for us and so we wouldn't recommend that and it doesn't lend itself well to a building roof or anything like that because well for one it's a fixed wing so you've got to have a decent area to launch it and land it um, and most Building areas that you're going to be lifting your roof, you're probably not going to have the room to accommodate its needs for takeoff and land. Um, but outside that, it is a phenomenal payload. It works really well. If you have large scales of land you wanted to map thermally, there's some applications for it, like groundwater monitoring, things like that. This is a great payload for it, but it really is a niche payload that's not our everyday thermal application. Um, and we also have one of the old Clear View Pro cars here, which is basically the same payload that is stuck on the SenseFly. And you can put this on um, any really Madlink or Pixhawk based uh, aircraft and use it and trigger it uh, very good. We do a lot of handheld type uh, fill-in work with this for certain things here and there. So we've got options with what we're doing, but in all of these, we are using the radiometric data. So yeah, this aircraft is you know enterprise ready. It's more dust resistant, more water resistant, and it's a different price point. So you're getting in at about twelve thousand dollars for the aircraft here. Then you've got batteries, payloads, things like that. We've got an XT2. You're in close for another twelve thousand dollars there. So really twenty four thousand to get going, and then you've got batteries, chargers, and things of that nature that you're going to add up. So completely different barrier of entry for the M300 RTK as a thermal setup than an Inspire 1. An Inspire 1, you're well under $20,000. You had multiple batteries, you had charger, you had your thermal payload, you had everything you needed to really get going. And while that's still a respectable number, it's a much lower barrier to entry for a service provider. Um, so for us, we've graduated into this and we're pretty happy with it. It's working very well. It's doing everything we need it to do right now. Um, but as we start looking for non-DGI options, um, we are using these FLIR payloads in the radiometric fashion for their full potential. We're using FLIR tools to do analysis on the data that we're collecting. We've got thermographers that are looking at it. So we can you know, make sure that all the images are on the same scale, that what we're seeing is real and true, and you know, advise our clients accordingly or deliver a report accordingly. Um, most of the options that you know we're seeing right now on the market have moved away from the Tau 2 image sensor, which is what's in these FLIRs, uh, and are going more towards the Boson sensor series, which is smaller, um, and that's why you see the Mavic Enterprise, you know, with its dual capability, you see the Altel Evo dual, um, but those are not radiometric today. Um, FLIR supposedly does have a Boson that is radiometric, uh, just has not made its way into any of the aircraft today. I did see a note that in the Altel Evo series, there was a firmware note about radiometric support. So I believe there's gonna be a unit coming online from Altel that's gonna be radiometric, which is important. So where do we go from here? It's no doubt that thermal is a pretty big part of our capabilities and we must have radiometric on our sensors. So that really means right now, the FLIR Duo is the only comparable to the X-T2 that's out there. If Altel Evo becomes radiometric, we'll absolutely test it out. An AFI thermal is way too low resolution. You'd maybe get five megawatts done in a day on a PV solar installation. It's just not enough. Everything else we've seen so far is not full radiometric. So we'll be testing out anything that becomes available. The Freefly Astro with a FLIR Duo payload on it really is the only thing that's equivalent to an M300 with an X-T2 on it. Pound for pound, they're pretty similar. 
and I do believe the Freefly Astro will even come in a little bit cheaper on that capability. Now, it's not to say that the Freefly Astro has all of the features and functions that the M300 RTK does, because it doesn't. But for thermal, for PV, solar inspections, for building roof envelope type inspections, it's going to get us there. It's going to have the capabilities we need, and it should be a very comparable system when trying to avoid a DJI-based platform.